Good day everyone. This pre-recorded lecture is about water microbiology. So this is a special topic under bacteriology. Before we will start, let us first define what is water microbiology. It deals with the study of microorganisms and parasites in water. But here in the Philippines, Water testing laboratories analyze bacteriological quality of water based or following the standard parameters mandated by the Department of Health and the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or in short, the DOH and the DENR. Our learning objectives for this discussion, at the end of the discussion, students are expected to, number one, understand the principle and process of membrane filtration technique, heterotrophic plate count method, and multiple tube fermentation technique in the bacteriological analysis of water. Number two, interpret and calculate the results based on the standard values of drinking water, Number three, appreciate the significance of water microbiology in our daily life. And lastly, to apply the concepts and principles of water microbiology as a registered medical technologist in the future. Everything that you have learned, the principles and the concepts that you have learned in your medical microbiology in bacteriolo uh, bacteriology subject to be specific is still the same with what you will apply in water microbiology. But this time class, yung sample natin is instead of body fluids is actually water. So again, water na yung sample, hindi na yung human body fluids. Okay? So before we will proceed with the next slides, I will just give you a little background about water microbiology laboratories. So water microbiology, again, it deals with the study and analysis of microorganisms and parasites in water. But here in the Philippines, yung mga water testing laboratories are analyzing bacteria in water only. Okay? And you will know later why bacteria lang, limited lang to bacteria and not the rest of the microorganisms. Yung water testing laboratories class has three sections. Um, namely, environmental laboratory for the metal analysis in water, wet laboratory for the physical and chemical analysis of water, and lastly, yung microbiology laboratory or department for the bacteriological analysis of water. Dito na pumapasok si medical technologies. Medtechs are the one that analyzes um, bacteriological quality in water in a microbiology department, in a water testing laboratory. Water microbiology deals with the analysis of water, yung drinking water, wastewater, and recreational water. What are these wastewater? For example, sludge, mud, sewage, and septic. And recreational water like the sea, swimming pools, ponds, lake, and more, or and other recreational water. I have a question. Why is water microbiology significant? Or what is the importance or significance on the analysis of bacteria in water? Number one, to ensure safe consumption of water or safe usage of water, whether it is for drinking purpose or for daily use, like for the laundry, for washing the dishes, and use for taking a bath. Whether it is for drinking or for daily use, it should pass the standard bacteriological quality. Second is to protect the environment. So dito na pumapasok si DEANR or Department of Environment and Natural Resources. I know you're wondering why do we have to test wastewater when in fact from the word itself, waste, it is expected na meron talagang bacteria. So we test or analyze um, wastewater samples, again, to protect the environment. There is this threshold value or limitation uh, mandated by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Once it goes beyond the threshold or limitation, that is the time it should be regulated. So again, Yung significance of water microbiology analysis is to ensure safe consumption of water to prevent people from getting diseases. 
And second is to protect the environment. So it does not only protect the people but also to protect the environment. Water testing laboratories class are regulated and accredited by DOH and DANR. Okay, yung drinking water, kasali na dito yung mga for laundry, for taking a bath, and for washing the dishes, for example, are under the Department of Health. Yung wastewater and recreational water are under your Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Lastly, who are the analysts behind a water microbiology lab? So, DOH highly recommends um, I mean, not recommends, they highly require registered medical technologists, microbiologists, and food technologists. But these professionals should undergo a special training given by the East Avenue Medical Center. Yung East Avenue Medical Center class, this is the national reference laboratory where water microbiology belongs, okay? But this time... DOH made a revision that other allied health science professionals like chemists and biologists can also analyze water samples or water bacteriological quality samples, provided that they also undergo the same training. However, sa part ni DENR, they are must strict. They really require registered medical technologists or microbiologists to analyze wastewater and recreational water samples. So that is just a brief background about water microbiology. So let us start. According to World Health Organization class, in year 1993, water is unsafe for human consumption when it contains pathogenic and non-pathogenic organisms. Again, when you say pathogenic, these are your disease-causing organisms. So whether it contains pathogenic and non-pathogenic organisms, it is not already safe for consumption because prevention is better than cure. In water microbiology testing, we are into the preventive side. We prevent diseases from happening, so we have to ensure first the safety by testing the water quality. So again, according to World Health Organization, whether it contains pathogenic or non-pathogenic organisms, it is not safe for drinking or for consumption. Okay? Meaning class, when you test this water, even though there is a growth of single colony that is still considered or marked as failed, meaning it is not safe for consumption. Ano ba yung good quality drinking water? First, it should be clear, colorless, free from objectionable taste and odor. And lastly, it must not contain any substance or organisms, chemicals, and radioactive materials. Among all the contaminants, the most common and most critical is the microbial contamination because of its sudden onset of diseases that might occur after. So that's why bacteriological quality of water is highly requested by clients um, in the testing or in a water testing laboratory. Water quality monitoring, it consists of bacteriological analysis physical analysis, chemical analysis, and radiological analysis. So again, dito tayo mga medical technologists sa bacteriological analysis. Kasi itong physical and chemical analysis is by the registered chemist or registered chemical technicians. Um, in addition to this, meron ding metal analysis using atomic absorption spectrophotometry in water. Okay? So let us focus only on bacteriological analysis. Why and when do we detect microorganisms in water? First, during outbreak investigation of waterborne diseases. Second is assessing safety, stability of water and water products for public consumption. So this refers to water providers like water refilling stations, for example. For them to operate or before they sell or produce water to the public, they should pass or submit for water testing. 
as one of the requirements for their business to operate. Okay. Third is to determine level of sanitation during product preparation. So this also refers to food restaurants and other fast food outlets to ensure as one of the requirements to ensure that food are prepared using safe or not contaminated water. Because most common diseases like diarrhea are due to contaminated water and foods prepared from contaminated water. Next is for regulatory compliance. Ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina that the ENR regulates um, wastewater and recreational water to protect the environment. Incidents and lastly is incidents surveys. So these are a few of the waterborne and most common waterborne microbial pathogens. I will not discuss each of these organisms. I believe it's already discussed in a separate topic in your bacteriology, virology, and parasitology. But again, ito yung mga most common waterborne microbial pathogens. Is it possible to test all of these organisms specifically? Actually, yes, but then it will be time-consuming and not practical at all. So DOH, um, together with DNR also, they um, have this uniform um, rule, uh, regulations on what parameters to test on water. So um, instead of use, identifying and isolating specific organisms, we use indicator organisms. So yung mga indicator organisms, these are your coliform bacteria. So no organism fulfills all the criteria for an indicator organism but the coliform bacteria. In water microbiology testing kasi class, we do not identify and isolate specific pathogens like what we do in a clinical laboratory. We only limit in, on to identifying the presence and absence of coliform bacteria. So, ganun lang siya kasimple, di ba? We only identify the presence or absence of coliform bacteria. Kasi nga, going back, according to World Health Organization, whether it contains pathogenic and non-pathogenic organisms, it is already considered not safe for human consumption. So, always remember that. So, again, yung mga indicator organisms are your coliform bacteria. So, why do they use or choose this indicator organisms, yung coliform bacteria. First, wide variety of intestinal pathogens are not practical to test all the organisms. Next is testing all the specific organisms involves complex methods and analysis. Third is it would be time consuming. Fourth, expensive methods of isolation and enumeration. And lastly, yung mga coliform bacteria natin, they, all, they also belong from the family Enterobacteriaceae. And remember that most clinically or medically significant bacteria are from the family Enterobacteriaceae. These are the most common coliforms. You have the Escherichia coli. It's said to be the most numerous coliform, Enterobacter species, Klebsiella, and Citrobacter species. If tested positive with coliform bacteria or the indicator organism, there is also possible presence of all relevant pathogens. So meaning 90% pag positive kay coliform bacteria, positive na rin yan sa other relevant pathogens. But there is also chance or percentage na walang pathogens present. But again, go back to the statement according to World Health Organization, Pag merong pathogenic or non-pathogenic organisms, it is still considered not safe for human consum consumption. So, next. What are coliforms? Coliforms are divided into two. It could be total or the fecal coliform. Yung total coliform class, they are almost found everywhere. Sa fomites, surfaces, dust, soil. And yung fecal coliform, this is under your total coliform. But they are found in fecal material, in animal and human excreta, for example. Yung E. coli, this is under your fecal coliform and it is said to be the most numerous group in your fecal coliform. 
your facult um, your coliforms are said to be facultative anaerob, meaning they primarily grow in the presence of oxygen, but they can also grow in the absence of oxygen. They are also gram-negative rods or bacilli, and they are non-spore forming, and they ferment lactose, so lactose dito yung carbon source or fermentable sugar, at 35 degrees Celsius for 48 hours sa total coliforms, and 45 44.5 degrees Celsius for, for, for 24 hours for thermotolerant or fecal coliforms. If you notice, yung fecal coliform, they require higher temperature than your total coliforms. Lastly, yung coliforms natin are said to be non-pathogenic. This is also one of the reasons why they are chosen to be, in, to be the indicator organisms. So, Escherichia coli, we are poo bacteria. Diba, remember, aside from Bacteroides fragilis, Escherichia coli is one of the normal flora in your intestine. So, it is expected that in fecal material or in animal and human excreta, there will be large number of Escherichia coli. So, actually, class, this is not written in correct scientific format. So, bacterial detection methods in water could be done through direct enumeration, indirect enumeration, and pathogen isolation and identification. Direct enumeration could be through microscopic count and colony forming unit count using non-selective media. So, non-selective media, these are like general media. And next is indirect enumeration through most probable number or multiple tube fermentation technique. This is a rough estimation, a quantitative estimation of the amount of bacteria in water. Pathogen isolation and identification is through series of biochemical tests, which we um, usually do in a clinical laboratory. But again, we do not isolate and identify specific pathogens in, uh, what, in a water microbiology laboratory. So this is a tabulation of the biochemical differentiation of bacteria. These are the most common bacteria or waterborne pathogens. I will not discuss again each of the tests. I'm just showing to you the tabulation. I believe this is also discussed already in bacteriology. So standard coliform detection methods, these are the accepted detection methods by the Philippine National Standards for Drinking Water Department of Health Administrative Order 2017. So this is your PNSDW. These are the only accepted detection methods. First, your multiple tube fermentation technique and the membrane filtration technique and heterotrophic plate count by a poor or spread plate method and also the rest below. But then, yung mga hindi naka-highlight, these are more expensive methods. So the most common and practical methods applied by most water testing laboratories are these three um, bold methods, yung multiple tube fermentation technique, membrane filtration, and heterotrophic plate count method. Multiple tube fermentation technique is used or can be applied both in drinking water and wastewater and also recreational water. Standard membrane filtration technique is applied in drinking water, the same with heterotrophic plate count method. Wastewater and recreational water class can be processed through membrane filtration technique and heterotrophic plate count. But because of the high density of bacteria, there are limitations of the method unless you do series of dilution, which could be time-consuming again or hassle. That's why most testing laboratories pag drinking water, membrane filtration technique, and heterotrophic plate count method. Pag wastewater na and other recreational water, they already proceed with multiple tube fermentation technique. Okay? So again, these are the standard coliform detection methods. By the way, class, yung Philippine National Standards for Drinking Water, dito lahat ng regulations and um, rules and the submission or the requirements for um, water testing quality. So before I will discuss each of these methods, I will first introduce you the different culture media used by these methods. 
as well as the reagent preparation, the sample collection and preservation, the quality control and quality assurance. So I'll just give you an overview, a quick overview of this um of this culture of the culture media under agent preparation always remember class that it is really very important no from the pre-analytical to analytical down to post-analytical phase na tama yung ginagawa natin kasi in case na may mali dyan, lalo na from pre-analytical phase it will really affect the result okay so dapat we should ensure, especially in microbiology, dapat we practice good microbiological practice and a septic technique in the procedure from the pre-analytical to analytical down to post-analytical phase. Lahat dapat tama. So, I will discuss culture media and reagent preparation before we will proceed with the top next slides about the different methods. Culture media preparation. So, culture media should be stored um, in the dark at less than 30 degrees Celsius in an atmosphere of low humidity, preferably less than 50%. So, that is why in a water testing laboratory or even in clinical laboratories, merong mga room temperature because there is this um, required temperature na dapat maatain. Do not use them or the culture media if they discolor or become caked and lose the character of a free-flowing powder. You sterilize culture media, everything in an autoclave at 121 degrees Celsius at 15 pounds per square inch pressure for 15 minutes or 15 PSI is equivalent to one atmospheric pressure. Sterilize everything, yung culture media, but... Do not sterilize this media, itong mga nakabold. Do not worry, we'll discuss this along with the methods. Itong mga inside sa parenthesis are the culture media used in the membrane filtration technique. This should not be autoclave because some of the composition or components of this culture media are said to be carcinogenic and are said to deteriorate if they are autoclave. Again, always follow whatever it is written in the manufacturer's bottle. So, lahat ng nasa bottle, i-follow natin by the manufacturer. So, do not autoclave itong mga naka-highlight. These are the culture media in your membrane filtration technique. Dispense promptly to culture tubes and sterilize within 2 hours. Do not store non-sterile media. Of course, class, pag nagawa nyo na yung culture media or yung mga agars, do not store it. You autoclave it or sterilize it immediately, again within 2 hours, to prevent contamination. Water specifications, of course, you use distilled or demineralized water. Holding times for prepared culture media. So this is the tabulation of the expiry of the prepared culture media. Preferably, dapat yung mga early mineral flasks natin at culture tubes should be screw cup, no? Para mas matagal or mas free siya from contamination. So yung fermentation tubes class may be stored at 25 degrees Celsius, or that is your room temperature. But then, do not store at this temperature for more than two weeks. Discard tubes with growth due to contamination. So, wag masayangan. Pag may contamination na, you discard it. If the culture media or the broth are refrigerated, for example, liquid media in fermentation tubes, bring all media first at room temperature before use and discard those tubes containing bubbles. So later you will know why you have to discard tubes containing bubbles kasi one of the methods, yung positive result is the presence of gas and those tubes containing bubbles might give confusion to the analyst. So again, if refrigerated, i-bring muna natin sa room temperature before use and discard tubes containing bubbles. You can temper melted agars in water bath at 44 to 46 degrees Celsius. This is true to heterotrophic plate count method. We don't worry, we will also discuss this. But do not hold longer than 3 hours class, okay? This might cause heat shock 
to stress organisms or this might kill or destroy stress bacteria. So do not hold longer than three hours. So ito yung suitable temperature for melted to temper melted agars in a water bath. You can insert a thermometer to monitor, but then there are already water baths na, na pwede na nating iset at this temperature. Record final pH after autoclaving of the culture media in the media consumption logbook. Of course, all the time, hindi pa to applicable now. Once you become analyst, all the time, meron talagang mga logbooks. Again, you record the final pH after autoclaving. It could be uh, through litmus paper or through pH meters. Label all the culture media and reagents with media or agent name, date prepared, expiration date, and who prepared the culture media. Of course, class, tayo mga medtechs, we always remember that mislabeling and misidentification is a mortal sin in the lab. Again, from pre-analytical phase, dapat tama yung ginagawa natin para walang uh, mali until the end. Okay? So, preparation of plates. Um, always remember, ha, pag-tube, again, pag-tube siya, you have to dispense first and then autoclave. Pag-plates, you have to autoclave first, then dispense. In your my water microbiology, what, uh, in your microbiology testing in water, the plates are not the usual petri dishes that you encountered in the lab, like the 100 millimeters by 15 millimeters petri dishes. These are very small, like 50 millimeters by 9 millimeters petri dishes. So you're going to dispense only 4 to 6 ml of the culture media. And then let it solidify at room temperature. And you store it in a refrigerator in an inverted position. And make sure, of course, na nakastore siya inside a sterile plastic bag or type container. Yung expiry date niya is for plate, uh, for everything na nasa plates ng culture, na culture media is two weeks. Same with the culture tubes. But preferably, do not use it longer than one week. Okay, so these are the culture media used. First, let's have multiple tube fermentation technique. In the presumptive um, identification, laurel sulfate broth or laurel tryptose broth is used for the detection of total and fecal coliforms. So yung laurel sulfate broth class or abbreviated as LSB is the selective medium for total coliforms, uh, routine testing in water, dairy products, and foods. So dito, this serves as a selective medium kasi may inhibitor siya, the sodium laurel sulfate, which inhibits organisms other than coliforms. Next is for the confirmatory, brilliant green lactose broth or BGLB is also a selective medium for the confirmatory test of total coliforms. So dito may inhibitory agents din siya, the brilliant green and the bile. Lactose dito also serves as the fermentable sugar. Yung E. coli broth or EC broth is used for the detection of fecal coliforms. And again, lactose pa rin dito yung fermentable and fermentable sugar or the carbon source. In your multiple tube fermentation technique, you need a dilution water. So these are the accepted dilution water, but the most commonly used is your 0.1% peptone water. So you have to dispense peptone water in a vial. That's a 100 ml yung i-dispense natin to meet 99 plus minus 2.0 ml or 10 ml yung i-dispense to meet 9 plus minus 0.2 ml. Kasi after autoclaving class, it is said to be some of the liquid are evaporated. So it is um, recommended that you have to dispense 100 ml to provide this um, amount, 99 plus minus 2.0 ml or 10 ml to provide or to meet 9 mi plus minus 0 0.2 ml after you store under refrigerated conditions and again discard if my contamination or turbidity use within 6 months. So why do we use peptone water? Kasi sa multiple tube fermentation technique, serial dilution yung principle. 
microorganisms that are subjected to environmental stress kasi class may become structurally or metabolically damaged or injured. Thus, they must be resuscitated by incubation in an appropriate non-selective medium or environment. Thus, we use 0.1% peptone water. The buffering system here kasi prevents bactericidal dam I mean bacterial damage due to the change in the pH of the medium. So, we use 0.1% peptone water as the dilution water. How do you prepare 0.1%? So, of course, 1 gram lang ng peptone water uh, agar and 1,000 ml of distilled water and that will give you 0.1% na peptone water. So, these are the pictures of the different culture medium used in multiple tube fermentation technique. So, ito yung laurel sulfate broth. Again, for the presumptive test of total and fecal coliform detection. And yung brilliant green lactose broth for the confirmatory detection of total coliforms. Then, yung EC broth or E. coli broth for the confirmatory test of Pecal coliforms and yung 0.1% peptone water is the diluent or dilution water. So ito, this is the tabulation for the preparation of LSB or LTB. So for non-potable water, it's prepared using this concentration. And for potable water, using this concentration. So magkaiba sila. Potable, these are your drinking water. The non-potable are the waste and recreational water. So again, it is prepared at different in different concentrations. So next, yung mga culture media for membrane filtration technique na tayo. First, we have Indo agar. So why it's called Indo? It's developed by a person named Indo. So Indo agar class is used for the detection and enumeration of total coliform. In here, yung inhibitory agents niya are basic fuchsin and sodium sulfite which inhibits gram-positive bacteria and other bacteria that are not said to be total coliforms. So this differentiates coliform bacteria on the basis of lactose fermentation. That's, it's, that is why later you will um, know that positive result of bacteria in the Indo agar medium is are said to be pink colonies. Meaning, pag pink colonies, these are the lactose fermenters. And these are your total coliforms. Next is your FC agar for fecal coliforms detection using membrane filtration technique. Dito, lactose pa rin yung fermentable sugar at bile salts yung inhibitory agents. And then next is your MTEC agar for Escherichia coli detection and enumeration using membrane filtration technique. Your MTEC agar is um, tested, yung E. coli is tested using MTEC agar or MTEC medium with urea broth. So, this is also for Escherichia coli detection or verification. So, MTEC agar and urea substrate class are recommended when evaluating microbiological quality of water. Then, additional reagents na kailangan natin, sodium hydroxide, the 0.2 normality of sodium hydroxide, and 1% rosolic acid. These are added in your FC agar. Lastly, yung 95% ethanol which is added to your endo agar. So, uh, why, is it, uh, why am I presenting first the culture media before we discuss the, the different methods? This is because class, um, in water microbiology or even in a microbiology department in a clinical lab, ang daming preparation. So preparation is really part of the process. Ang dami ding waiting, so waiting is also part of the process. So we have to make sure na lahat prepared before the analysis. Kasi nga, if we prepare on the time of the analysis, it will be very difficult na. So preparation is always important in microbiology, especially in the water lab. Um, bacteriological testing in water really um, requires a lot of preparation. So again, we have to prepare first the culture, media, and reagents to be used for the analysis. Next, 
all glasswares and membrane filtration technique should be sterile. Why? Again, kasi nga, ang culture media in your membrane filtration technique should not be sterilized or autoclave. So this time, lahat ng glasswares na ginagamit should be sterile. So these are the pictures of the different culture media in your membrane filtration technique. You have the endo agar. This is the FC agar. And the MTEC agar. I don't have a picture, but it's somehow purple. Then the urea broth. And then this one. Lastly, yung MTEC agar class, again, is used with urea substrate to detect and enumerate Escherichia coli. But then, there is this modified MTEC agar. The modified MTEC agar can already detect E. coli without urea substrate. So lastly, yung culture media na ginagamit for heterotrophic plate count method. First, yung place, uh, plate count agar or PCA, it can be used in your poor plate or spread plate method. And the rest of this agar are also um, used in heterotrophic plate count. But again, pinaka-common na ginagamit is yung plate count agar. So, this is how you prepare heterotrophic plate count by a poor plate method. The difference is, kasi a poor plate method, you do not need to prepare the agar first. No? You only uh, pour agar um, on the time in the time of analysis. While the spread plate method, you have to prepare the agar first. And on the plates, okay? So, this is how you prepare. But ito class, this is really wide open. Now, uh, when you prepare the culture media, when you pour the agar onto the petri dishes, dapat hindi siya ganito kabukas, okay? To prevent external contamination. And it should be done quickly as well. So lastly, never prepare media from basic ingredients when suitable dehydrated media are available. So lahat na bibili. You always read the material safety data sheet and follow manufacturer's directions in the preparation of each media. And again, process through a septic technique. Remember the good microbiological practice all the time. So, sample collection and preservation. I will not discuss this. As an analyst, you are not the one... To, uh, the, you're not the one who will collect the sample. There are certified water samplers. But then, as an analyst, it is also important that you know the basic knowledge of collecting these water samples. So, collecting water samples class vary. It depends on the type of sample. So, these are only few of the pictures the, of the devices used in collecting water samples, whether it's um, a recreational water like sea, pond, lake, wastewater, or a drinking water. This is an example of a sterile sampling bottle. So, dapat naka-sterilize yung sampling bottle. And the expiry date is one month. It should be used within one month. Kasi inside this sterile bottle class, we add 2 to 3 drops of 10% sodium thiosulfate for wastewater and recreational water. And then we also add 3% sodium thiosulfate for drinking water. Again, 2 to 3 drops. Of course, i-add muna natin itong mga uh, reagents na to or chemicals na to before autoclaving. So again, you add first 2 to 3 drops of sodium thiosulfate and then you autoclave. Okay? So, this is um, your sample collection and preservation. So, just basic overview I will, I will give to you when you collect water samples in faucets or in water dispensers. You have to run around 2 to 3, in 2 to 3 minutes, you run the water in 2 to 3 minutes to um, remove external contamination. And then you heat the mouth or it could be also that you can apply um, sodium hypochlorite because there are instances especially if plastic yung water dispenser na it will be burned out or um, pwede siya masunog so instead of um, applying flame you apply sodium hypochlorite solution so and then after that you run again for two to three minutes and then that's the time you collect the water sample so, for the quality control, of course, it is still important na may dapat quality control. Lahat ng laboratory analysis class, there should be quality control to know that everything that you are doing is still 
correct. So, these are the list of control culture organisms for the microbiological tests in water. So, for your total coliforms, these are the positive control and negative control ito. For fecal coliforms, ito din yung positive control at ito yung mga negative control. So, um, most commonly, yung total coliforms, like, E. coli talaga yung positive control and fecal coliforms then E. coli yung positive control. For the negative control, yung total coliforms use uh, staphylo uses Staphylococcus aureus. Yung Staphylococcus aureus is not E. coliform. And then for fecal coliform, the negative control is your Enterobacter aerogenes. Enterobacter aerogenes is a total coliform and not E. fecal coliform. So again, these are the list of the control culture organisms for microbiological tests in water. So these are example pictures of the control cultures. Ito siya class um, as a tube media. Um, na, na, a subculture pa natin to in a general media like nutrient agar. This one, these are ampules of the organisms. So all of these control cultures are both in a certified um, laboratories. Like, for example, it should be from ATCC or from UP Diliman Los Banos Biotech. Hindi pwede kahit saan lang binibili, not even from hospitals. This organism should be certified. Okay? So this is how you prepare the um, control or organisms for control. So it's still the same with how you analyze the sample, but this is how you prepare, okay? I'll not discuss or go over with this already. So once you already prepare your control um, sample, you should check the purity to make sure na walang contaminants, okay? Dapat pure culture yung nagawa ninyo. So how to check the purity of culture organisms, you can do gram staining. Of course, pag Staphylococcus aureus, your negative control, it should appear as gram positive cocci in clusters. For po uh, positive control, yung Escherichia coli, it should appear gram negative bacilli. Another is through eosin method in blue agar kasi E. coli appears to be or grows as greenish metallic chain on eosin method in blue medium. And then for Staphylococcus aureus, you can perform tube coagulase tests, okay? Lastly, perform blank tests in every batch of analysis using the same procedure to know na effective or efficient pa yung mga culture media or reagents na na-prepare natin. Wala pang mga contamination. So you should perform blank tests in every batch of analysis, Lastly, yung quality assurance. I will not discuss this, but I will give you copy. You can go through um, this information of the quality assurance in a water testing laboratory. So ito, we have this air micro quality check. We always ensure na sterile ang room and yung equipments. So we do air micro quality check using plate count agar. So, very, ito yung procedure, how to do air micro quality check. So, this is an example of a water testing laboratory, yung microbiology department. So, ito yung sterile room. So, if you notice, meron tayong um, red light for old, uh, as a signal if naka-on yung UV light. So, there is this UV light na naka-install to make sure na sterile yung uh, micro room. Okay. So, these are the references that I am using, the standard methods for the examination of water and wastewater. So, ito siya class. This is the 22nd edition and this is the 23rd edition. This is the Bible really of water microbiology in all water testing laboratories, even in the United States. Ito yung Bible ng water microbiology. The Philippine National Standards for Drinking Water by the Department of Health um, revision 2017 follows this book, the standard methods for the examination of water and wastewater. So for now, 
kahit may 23rd edition at 22nd edition pa rin yung ina-apply ni DOH. I don't know with the latest revision. I heard there is a 2020 revision but they have not released it yet. Yung 2017 um, PNSDW pa rin yung ina-apply ng lahat ng water testing laboratories. And again, the 2017 applies the 22nd edition. This 23rd is already new. That's all about the introduction. Uh, that's all for the introduction about water microbiology. I will discuss the different, the three methods in a separate lecture. I mean, in a separate pre-recorded lecture. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day, everyone.